All right, well, here's my pearl knife collection. And uh, pearl knives are really kind of neat. When I first saw them, I thought they were kind of girly. But uh, once I handled one, I realized that they're really works of art. And they really represent something that's kind of special. And what's special about them is that it is a resource that is farmed. Um, and it's something that is not man-made. And it's something that's very beautiful. And they're all different. Each one has its own character. Um, you can see hues of blue, red, purple, and just amazing um, artifacts and different knives that make each knife a little bit different than the other, than each other. Um, a lot of these that are in my collection are really old. Some are new. You can definitely tell the difference between the newer ones and the older ones. So we'll just take a look at some of these real quick. And <clears throat> real easy way, a lot of people say, well, I've got a pearl knife. Well, how can you tell that it's a pearl knife? Um, one way to tell that it's a pearl knife is that it, <clears throat> it has a coolness to it. Something about pearl, I could look it up on the internet if I chose to, but something about pearl retains coolness. You can uh, place it on your cheek or just lay your hand on it and you can feel the temperature difference of your pearl compared to a plastic or a resin type um, knife, if you will. All right, And then some of the newer ones today have a thinner sheet of pearl and maybe have a resin type laid over it. All right, So you might look at something like this and say these are really thick slabs of pearl but in reality what it is is a thin sheet of pearl that has a resin laid over it and then it's polished. All right, and That just basically saves money. It's less pearl that they have to use because obviously resin is cheaper than a natural material that has to be farmed, has to be cut from the pearl itself. If you've ever seen a pearl shell, um, I used to have one laying around, but you can look this up on the internet if you like. It's, they're round, they're awkward, they're, they're different shapes and sizes. And it takes a lot of skill to remove that pearl and place it onto a knife, pin it onto a knife without cracking it. Pearl knives, the older ones, it's very common to see them cracked. And here's a smaller one. And the older knives have some really interesting little blades on them. They have some really nice stuff. But a lot of them are cracked. When In a rare case, when you do find an older knife that's not cracked, that's a real special thing. These are solid pearl slabs. There's no resin or anything on them. And this knife is close to 100 and 50 years old and it's never been used. Um, all handmade and I'm not going to go into the actual browns, brands um, you know I have uh, most of them are, that I have are made in Germany of Ewick, Bruckman and uh, <clears throat> I also have a Keen Cutter which is an American made knife and these are all older knives which are in the you know hundreds of years old nice snap to them absolutely beautiful they've got weird things to them though look at this little nail file here look at that you can sit there and file your nails very thick material they didn't you know they oh, look at this one it's got like a like a sharp awe or something it's like a needle very interesting um, it's got all kinds of nifty little gadgets on this one. It's got a pair of scissors. Everyone thought Swiss Army Knife uh, invented scissors. Um, let me see if I can get that out. Can't. Here's a ooh, look at that a little hawk blade. Look at that utility blade. That is sweet. And look, it goes with the shape of the knife, so it's part of a tool, like you'd be cutting. This is a bit like having a little tool chest in your uh, in your pocket. Look at these old scissors. Look at that. Oh, those of you that like uh, like the whittlers. Whittlers are real pop popular. It's a really nice uh, frame. You have your two smaller blades here, and look at this thick blade that this one comes with. 
I'll compare that side by side with a look at that beautiful knife. Look how thick that is. That's for some heavy use. I'll compare it to just a here's just your run of the mill. Look at the thickness difference. Is that cool or what? They really made things. I picked up this knife for a very nice price, a lot cheaper than you would pay for a, a new knife. And again, I, I've always stated that the older knives are made better. People don't know what they are, and they don't know what to charge for them. You can go to the Case Knife website and pay 60, 70 bucks for a brand new, you know, machine made case knife. I mean, why do that when you can do a little research? and buy an older knife that's made to this caliber. Beautiful. All polished on the inside. All hand done. It's got jeweling on the back. Nice snap. You hear that snap? That's how they should snap. Everything just is perfectly made. Listen to that. Beauty. Very nice. Here's another one. Now this is a case knife made in the 80s. Got some nice snap to it. It's got that typical case snap. You know? It's a nice made knife. And here's a this is an ulcer. I think I'm saying that right. Very popular brand. They make some really nice knives. It's got a nice swedge on it. All their blades have really nice swedges. Here's a Bulldog. They make some really nice knives. This is made in Germany. The blades are removable, which is really cool. I think. And this is a good whittler, you know. Everything lines up really nice. It's a nice, very nice made knife. Pretty much perfect. It's got a nice half stop to it. See, these are little bonuses that you get in knives. That's a half stop. That that costs money to manufacture. It's it's an additional option. It's like leather seats on your Honda Accord. It's extra. The knives of today, they. They don't do stuff like that. They, oh, it doesn't have a half stop. Well, that's no big deal. I really don't need one. Well, I mean, it's nice to have that option. You don't need leather seats either, but it's kind of nice to have that option, that safety mechanism put into place. <clears throat> see, almost all the old knives have half stops. That's a half stop. Let me see. See, this is a 80s case. They got rid of the half stops. Here is a keen cutter. Hope that you guys can really pick this up. It's a keen cutter, one of the more popular brands. It's got a little corrosion on it, no biggie. And you don't want to polish this knife up and remove all the corrosion. You do want to you do want to clean it up to the point where the corrosion is not destroying the knife further, and then you want to preserve it. And yeah, and I I preserve my knives with. Uh, uh, tough glide. Some people use mineral oil. That that's fantastic. I ha I might even start going to mineral oil. It's non toxic. It's cheaper. Um, and that will stop the knife from corroding. Look at this one. This one also has that little. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Little nail file in it, and it just perfectly lines up. Boy, they did things nice back then. Look at these little scissors. This one's got beauty, huh? It's nice. All right, and those are my pearl knives. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to clean them up and put them back in their case.